welcome to St Andrew's Church in Bevington. Well, stay at home church anyway. For those of you who are new, welcome. It's great to see you. And for those of you who are regulars, well, welcome back. And for those of you who can't reach your remote to turn the TV off, uh, hang around. Uh, you may find something which uh, gives you hope in this weird time. My name's Tim, and if you're watching this live, it's Sunday the 7th of February. We've got a lot coming up this morning, an exclusive interview with someone who was there. Uh, we've got a challenge, a very unique way of retelling the feeling of the 5,000 and some crafty friends, sorry, some crafty prayers, which you'll need some paper for, some scissors, some prick stick and a pen. I hope that you managed to get to see the fast food facts and jokes from earlier. Um, there were a couple though that I forgot to include, so let me tell you the joke about the pizza. Oh, never mind, it's far too cheesy. And why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over a bay, there'd be a bagel. Anyway, there are no words, are there? So let's have our first song by our friends Nick and Becky Drake. It's a song that talks about how God's worked through all history and in the lives of loads of people and in their son and how God works in our lives too, all through history. <laughs> God again. The Lord is good, the Lord is strong, and we will live our lives for Him.
So, family challenge time. I've been going through my cupboards to see what my family have left me to eat, and I found some food. So, I want you to look at these, and using your uh, other brain cells that you might have from around the room, or maybe your own little grey cells, you need to try and remember the 10 items that I have found in my cupboards. So I'm going to show you this food now, and then I'm going to give you just one minute for Chi to chat amongst yourselves. Maybe write it down. See how many of these items you can remember. So here we go. Item number one. Shreddies. Item number two. Baked beans. Other brands are available. Item number three. Pasta. Item number four. Tuna. Item number five. Onion rings. Item number six. Zesty lemon cake. Maybe if I'm very lucky, someone will make me a cake this weekend. Item number six. Hot chocolate. Other brands are available. Item number seven. One of our favourites in the Shelton household, Home Pride Pasta Bake. Item number eight, give us a twirl. And lastly, number nine, chow mein sauce. There you go, quite random. So, let's go back through those once more. Chow mein sauce. Pasta Bake. Tuna. Hot chocolate, twelve, shreddies, pasta, baked beans, onion rings, and lastly, zesty lemon cake mix. So your one minute starts now. T-minus one minute. T-minus 50 seconds. T-minus 40 seconds. T-minus 30 seconds. T-minus 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. Okay, so let's go over those and see if you remember them all. We have onion rings. We have zesty lemon cake mix. We have hot chocolate. We have shreddies. We have tuna. We have twirls. We have pasta bake. We have pasta. And we have charmaine sauce. Yeah, is anyone screaming at me because you got them all but you realize that I've missed one? Can you remember which one I missed? Have a think, which one did I not go through then? Yeah, that's right. It was the baked beans. Beans, beans, good for your heart. But anyway, I'm going to stop there. So, um, <laughs> let's move on um, and find out what's been going on in the local area. As I hand over to newsreader Tim in the newsroom studio. Tim.
Well, good morning. We've been receiving reports from very concerned parents across the country and every one of them is saying the same thing. Within half an hour of finishing their meal, children seem to be suffering from an acute attack of hunger. Here are some of the scenes from around the homes in the UK. What, Mom, what are you making for today? I'm hungry. Oh, I'm so hungry. Please, can I have something to eat? Please, can we go to Greg's? Mom, I'm hungry. When is tea? Mom, am I have some sweets? I want food. I want pudding. Oh, I'm so hungry. Can I have something to eat? There's nothing in here. Can we go to Subway? I, I'm hungry. I want food. But in one place, we seem to have a very different story. So it's over to our reporter in the field, Jen. Well, thanks, Tim. While hunger pains seem to be striking the nation, I've come to the one place where that doesn't seem to be a problem. In fact, there was so much food here last night that there have been big baskets full of leftovers. I managed to catch up with one of the dads who was here on the scene yesterday. Matt, can you tell us what happened? It were amazing. I was so hungry and now I'm not. I was here with my family and we've been listening to this Jesus fella talk all day. There are a massive crowd, thousands of people all listening. Jesus, that bloke from Galilee, what was he talking about? Well, he was telling us stories. Some were amazing and some were quite confusing. He talked to us about a farmer scattering seed on different types of ground. He talked about a big problem in my garden, weeds growing. I don't think he was actually talking about weeds. And then he talked about treasure and pears and yeast and food. But that went on a bit. Telling me all day. He was really interesting, but when he got the food bit about yeast, my tummy was growling. Me and the little ones were so hungry. We had a bit of a trek to go home. We didn't want to leave, but I knew my wife wouldn't be happy if we hadn't eaten. So what happened? Well, as Jesus was wrapping up, his friends seemed to start to be sending people away. But Jesus stopped them. It was like he had a plan or something and wanted us to stay. He sent his friends on a mission to find what food we had. I mean, I had nothing because i am eating it all up. They must have found loads of food judging from all the leftovers. No, a little lad had two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread. That was all. It was lovely. I'm full now. Sorry, you mean you ate this kid's packed lunch? Poor kid, what about everyone else? No, I wasn't like that at all. Jesus picked up the fish and the bread, thank God for it, and then his friends started passing it around. That wouldn't have taken long, I bet it only fed a few people. It took ages. There were over 5,000 of us plus our kids. and Some of us brought our wives. We all sat down in groups. Jesus' friends brought the food round. We ate our fill, and then there was still some left over. Help yourself. Wow. Well, thanks for that, Matt. That's amazing. When we find out where Jesus is heading to next, we'll let you know. Might be worth taking the kids and see if they can be satisfied for a few hours. In fact, I might go myself. This Jesus sounds like there's a bit more to him than meets the eye. Anyway, back to the studio. Thanks newsreader Tim, our Raven reporter Jen and Matt who's taken his time away from his family to show us what happened. Well we're going to hand over to Crafty Jen now for our craft activity and after this short introduction we're going to be looking at our next song Cornerstone. This will give you a chance for those of you who are wanting to draft out the craft activity to do so and for those of you wanting to reflect on Jesus having a plan for us in our lives being the rock that we can build our lives on, then you can join in with this worship as well. And we'll come back to the prayers later. So, over to Crafty Jen. Good morning, everyone. For our prayers today, you're going to need two pieces of paper. It doesn't matter if they're the same colour, but if you have got a different colour, that might look good if you want to. Um, you're going to need either a pencil or a pen. You'll need a pair of scissors and you'll need some glue. Don't worry if you haven't got all these things, I'll tell you at the end what you can do without, okay? So, I'll show you what we're doing first with your first piece of paper. 
So on your piece of paper, nice and big, you need to draw the outline of a fish. Because we heard today about how Jesus used two fish and five loaves of bread to feed all those people. So you've got your outline of a fish. Now, during the next song, if you take your other piece of paper and start cutting out some circles for scales, they need to be big enough that you can write a name on them. So I reckon maybe about that big or so, or a bit bigger if you like. And just cut yourself out some circles that you can use as scales. They don't have to be very even. Okay, but we're going to end up sticking these on. So during the next song, if you want to cut out some circles, if you haven't got scissors and glue and paper, it's fine. You could always just draw some circles on your fish for the scales. So why not make a start on that while we listen to this next song? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest friend But wholly trust in Jesus' name My hope is built on nothing less And Jesus' blood Righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest way, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ the
So, the feeding of the 5,000. We've heard what it was like to be there. But let's look at what this reimagined feeding of the 5,000 was like. The Feeding of the 5,000 by Amy and Reuben Zill Jesus was feeling sad. He got into a boat to sail to a quiet place. But when he was there, he found that lots of people followed him and got there first. Lots and lots of people. Lots and lots and lots of people. Over 5,000. And although Jesus was sad and tired, he got out the boat to be with them and he made the ones who were poorly better. The people stayed there all day and it was starting to get late. The disciples came to Jesus and told them to send the crowds away to get themselves some food. But Jesus said, they don't need to go away, you feed them. But we hardly got any food. We've only got five loaves and two fish. That's nowhere near enough to feed 5,000 people. But Jesus had a plan and he wanted people to stick with him. Jesus told them to bring the food to him. He thanked God for the food. Then he split it up and gave it to the disciples to give out. There was enough food for everyone and everyone had enough. There was so much food that there were 12 baskets of leftovers at the end. And Jesus sent the crowd home full and satisfied. I love the feeding of the 5,000 or 5,000 plus, because the Bible doesn't count up the women and children, just the men. Loads of people have loads to say about it, about it being about God's goodness and his generosity and pl his plenty to people. And that's great. But I like to think about Jesus knowing that everything will be okay in the end. I mean, here are a ton of people who have just come to see him. They've been hanging around all day listening to Jesus teaching and it's getting to the evening and the disciples start to get worried. How was Jesus going to feed them all? I mean, there wasn't a local McDonald's or Subway that people could grab food from. So trying to be helpful, they started trying to suggest to Jesus that maybe they should all go home. Maybe come back tomorrow for part two. But I like to think that Jesus had a little twinkle in his eye. He knew what he was going to do. He had a plan and he wanted people to stick with him. You see, I believe that Jesus knew that he would create enough food for them all. The disciples didn't know this. They could only see things from this world. But Jesus knew it was all going to be OK. The people weren't going to be go hungry they were going to be well fed. So not only did the disciples have to trust Jesus, so did the crowd. So when Jesus was given five loaves and two fish, it didn't seem enough, but Jesus knew it would be. And then Jesus did the miracle. He fed all these thousands of people and the Bible said they were satisfied. That should translate as full. There was even food left over. That's how generous Jesus is. Jesus had a plan and he wanted people to stick with him. And it's like that today. You see, we can't sit down with Jesus at the moment and have a huge meal, but I believe one day we will. Yet we can't sit down listening to Jesus teach all day, but I believe one day we will. And we can't see what Jesus' plan is from our perspective, but I believe that we will one day. But what we can do is trust him today. Like the people who stayed listening to Jesus, they got fed. They were well looked after. And Jesus' plan happened because they stayed. 
I think in this weird world that we live in, and we find ourselves again today at home, not at school with our friends, not seeing our family outside our worlds, not for some of us being able to go to work, it's all far too easy for us to get worried. And the disciples were worried too. And it's okay to be worried because it shows that you care. The disciples cared and like them, we too need to remember that Jesus had a plan and he wants us to stick with him. And if you can, and if you do, then I tell you this, like the people who stayed and were well fed, it will be great. It will all work out and Jesus will give us more than we could ever ask for. You see, the feeding of the 5,000 is about Jesus' generosity. He didn't have to feed anyone. It would have been far easier to have the disciples send them home and hope that people came back for part two the following day. But that isn't Jesus' plan. He wants people to know that he's with them. He's there helping, supporting and making sure that we're all provided for. And he knows what that should look like. We just need to trust him and stick around. We'll see over the next few family services how Jesus' plan plays out and how his plan always works. So stick with him because it's amazing. Let's just pray. Father God, help us to stick with you even when it's hard. Help us to trust in your plan even when we can't see it. And help us to hold on to you so that we can keep trusting you. Thank you that Jesus had a plan and help us to stick with him and trust that plan too. Amen. So hopefully now you've finished your fish and your scales are ready. So let's hand over to Jen for our prayers. And after that, we'll have our last song, Nothing's Too Big, Big, Big for God's Power. Okay, so hopefully you've got your fish ready and you've got some circles of paper ready. Um, and we've been thinking about Jesus having a plan and how he provided for all those people. And I want you to have a little think about people you know who might need God to help them and provide for them now. It might be somebody you know like by name, like a friend or a grandparent. And you could write their name on one of the scales that you've made. So I'm going to write a name here. Or it could be um, a teacher, perhaps, that you know, or um, somebody that you know who might be poorly. I'm going to write another name on here as well. So write on some circles the names of people who you want to pray for this morning. It might be that you want to pray for a group of people who need God to provide for them, maybe to provide strength and patience or wisdom and energy like our doctors and nurses perhaps. So I'm going to write doctors on one of these and I'm going to write nurses. Perhaps it's for your teachers in school who are providing the work for you while you're at home or maybe you're having to go to school at the moment and they're looking after you in there. So we'll pray for our teachers as well. And I think it would be also a really good thing to pray for the people who are having to make all the big decisions for us at the moment in our government. So I'll just give you a couple of minutes to have a little think about who you'd like to pray for and to write that down on one of those scales or a few of those scales. And when you've made your scales, pop some glue on your fish. And as we pray, we're going to start sticking them down. Okay, so let's pray. Lord God, we pray for all the people that we have written down on our scales today. Thank you that you know every one of them by name. Thank you that you know what they need at the moment. Please help them and provide everything that they need to get through this time. And thank you God for the reminder that even when we can't see it, you have a plan and you love us 
and you're working through everything, even this lockdown. Help us to keep trusting in you. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we close our service, may I thank you for joining with us this morning. It's been great to spend this time of worship with each other, thinking about God's plan and the importance of us sticking with God even when it might feel so hard. Please keep an eye on our social media feed and website newsletters and if there's anything we can do for you uh, as a church then please do reach out to us. We're going to close our service in a word of prayer so I'd invite you just to bow your heads. Almighty God, we bring this world to you. Bless us, give our government guidance and wisdom in this difficult time. And we pray that you will equip us and help us to know your love and help us to love you more and more in these days. Amen. So thanks very much for joining us today and I hope you have a great week. See you soon.